I briefly want to just talk about three things. Uh, I do want to say right off the bat, I think you are doing important work. We face many challenges, big and small, and we can achieve so much and meet just about any challenge if we mobilize our scientific thinking capability. It's not really our natural way, but it's there. We can do it. It just takes a little bit of practice. I had a conversation with someone a, a couple of years ago uh, who works on something similar, uh, actually a person from IDEO. They talk about design thinking, but he was a little discouraged. He said, you know what? This doesn't work. Scientific thinking doesn't scale because it takes one-on-one -on -one coaching. And there's been some conversations about that here at the conference that you know coaching is really one-on-one. -on -one. Each learner has different needs. And he was kind of giving up, saying, yep, Scientific thinking is great, or design thinking, or whatever you want to call it, uh, but it doesn't scale. It's too coaching intensive. All right? Toyota found an elegant solution to that, and that is the workplace is the training ground with managers, supervisors, and team leaders as the coaches, which turns into this kind of coaching chain or coaching cascade. So they've combined teaching with working, and I think that's a pretty elegant solution. And it even goes a little bit further. If you look at this diagram, this is also how Toyota aligns its organization toward the goals it, it wants to achieve. So we're getting work done. We're practicing scientific thinking with coaches, managers, supervisors, team leaders as coaches, and we're aligning our organization while we do that. that that's pretty elegant. What we noticed in our work in the last 10, 15 years, this stuff spills over. People practice in the workplace but they don't turn off their mindset when they go home. And they go home and they work on things that are not work-related, and they influence people like their children, their partners, their friends, in this scientific thinking way. You, you don't turn your mindset off when you go home. So it's not just as, at work. And this, in a way, is the Toyota Kata mission. When we did the research, it was, wow, this is really cool stuff. How do you get this out here? And the first idea was to write a self-help book. You know, kind of, and there are lots of those. And I did cringe at that a little bit and add another self-help book to the pile. So let's make this a workplace thing. And that turned out to be really kind of cool, that the workplace, in a way, you can think of the workplace as the world's largest classroom and managers, supervisors, team leaders are its teachers. And what I wanted to say to you about important work is this. Wherever and whomever you coach in scientific thinking, you're doing important work. It's not just a problem at work. It's not just a team at work. They take it home with them. They take it into the world. And so you're a teacher or a coach in the biggest classroom in the world. And I think that's pretty cool. So that's one thing I wanted to say. I just wanted to point out that you guys are part of that. Number two, I wanted to talk a little bit about uh, Caught on the Classroom. How many have been to this website or know about Caught on the Classroom? All right, well, if you haven't, uh, katatogrow.com, there's nothing for sale there, and it's a homebrew website, so don't look too closely. It's for educators. There's a puzzle exercise some of you may be familiar with. There are variations of it, and that's basically an exercise that uses a puzzle or a deck of cards, et cetera, to introduce the four-step improvement kata pattern, which the educator can then use in various ways in their classroom. There's a second exercise called the catapult exercise, and that's essentially to give uh, students practice in making run charts and some people really take off with that. So companies and teachers use this. One of the things we've learned, though, in, in the meantime, and I think most of us know this, uh, teachers are overwhelmed. They're, they've got all sorts of requirements they have to meet. Uh, and essentially what we're doing here with the puzzle exercise and the catapult exercise is giving them another exercise that they have to learn. They have to figure out how to run the puzzle exercise. It's very simple. But it does require you to sit down, familiarize yourself with a new PowerPoint, and so forth. So teachers are now returning to in-person classrooms, right? And they're doing a lot of STEM activities. Everybody knows the marshmallow exercise with uh, you know, a pasta and marshmallows make the tallest tower. There's an endless array of exercises that teachers are doing, indoors and outdoors, as you see. Uh, but one thing that's a little bit sobering to watch is that a lot of these exercises, when they're being done, lack reflection and iteration. It becomes an exercise to build the tallest tower, and whoever builds the tallest tower is the best team, or it's used as a team-building exercise. Uh, and what happens is the students end up focusing on the activity, not on the meta-pattern that they might be learning. 
So we've got these great exercises in kind of the classroom, but at the same time, teachers are busy. They're already running a lot of different exercises. Here are some examples, uh, but they have some shortcomings. Not all teachers are doing it that way, but a lot of these are being run just as one-off exercises with no reflection, no iteration, uh, and the student uh, thinks what they're trying to learn is how to make the tallest tower with pasta and marshmallows. So we added an exercise called Kata Quick Start to the Kata in the uh, Classroom website. Basically, it's a simplified version that educators can easily add to existing classroom activities. This does not have an activity associated with it. It is just an overlay that a teacher can put, simply put, into uh, any exercise. So it doesn't have an activity in itself. Uh, here are a couple of tweets about it. It's for teachers. Are you organizing a STEM activity? Learning to build a spaghetti tower may not help our life, but learning a scientific thinking pattern while you build the spaghetti tower will help our life. And also for parents, uh, I think especially during the pandemic, parents have gotten pretty interested in what their kids are doing, maybe even turning into teachers themselves. So these are two target groups for the Kata Quick Start to practice the transferable skill of scientific thinking. And here's my first ask of all of you here. If you go to the Kata in the Classroom website, which is katadegrow.com, I've added a, a menu item called Quick Start. Click on it, download, I think it's a 12 page PowerPoint file, that's it, it's very simple. Download it, take a look at it, and share it. Share it with teachers, educators, and share it with parents. And again, there's nothing in there for sale, there's nothing being marketed whatsoever. It's completely easy to use, it's very simple, and it's something they can inject into their own exercises. If a teacher were to do 10 different exercises during the school year, and each exercise would have, say, three iterations of practice. Okay, try, what'd you learn? Let's do it again, let's do it again. But they overlay this pattern, they overlay this pattern onto the exercise. The students would get 30 cycles of repetition in a scientific thinking meta pattern. I think that could be pretty impactful. So please go to the site, download it, share it as you will. That's my first ask of you, and I have one more. Uh, I mentioned, I showed you a couple of tweets there. I wanted to ask you, how many people read uh, my tweets? Okay, well, thank you. So I put things on Twitter that would be useful for the Toyota Kata community. I see the, the, the job there is to feed the community with material, things you can use, things you might find useful. What are others doing? I'll tweet about that. Graphics, take them, use them, and slide it right off of Twitter onto your desktop, and you can build it into your own presentations if you want or change it. I post ideas, things to think about, uh, things that we're learning, events like this one, uh, and also related topics. I mentioned design thinking. There are a lot of people working on scientific thinking, even though they may not exactly call it that, and it's nice to see the overlap. The thing is, you don't have to join Twitter to read Twitter. I don't know how many people know that. So you can remain entirely anonymous. You don't have to get into that Twitter sphere. But my handle is at real Mike Rother. You see it at the top there. All you do is type that into your search engine and it'll take you to my feed and you can scroll through it and read it and take whatever you want. So if you were to read it, say, a couple times a week, find useful stuff, that's great. You'll also meet other Kata geeks there because if somebody's doing something, I'll post about it and you'll discover there are Kata geeks out there. So I encourage you, even though you may have some Twitter hesitance, you don't have to join, you'll be anonymous, but you can read my tweets if you like. You can get some stuff there. Here's kind of the point. Has anyone seen this book, The Starfish and the Spider? I highly recommend it to anyone who's involved with Toyota Kata. Remember I said you're part of a network, part of a subject that's evolving and growing. Uh, it's a book that compares and contrasts a centrally controlled organization with a decentralized organization. The spider is centrally controlled. The starfish is decentrally controlled. What we very consciously have done these last 10, 15 years with Kata is the decentralized distributed network because we're not smart enough and it's a young subject. So that's kind of the picture the book uses of the decentralized network. And the idea is we can share in the network what we're doing so we can all learn and evolve from that. So if you're doing it a little bit differently, we can learn from that and adjust. This is not a subject that is baked. It's a continual learning and it has different shadings depending on who you are. Here's my second ask. I think the people in this room, you, are like the blue nodes in this diagram of a distributed network. You're geeked enough to come here, 
And there are people out there doing cool stuff, and I'm always amazed when I hear about this stuff, and I'm always a little disappointed that it doesn't get out. So my second ask of you is, as a member of this network of people trying to you know, bring more scientific thinking into the world, but as a node in this network, if you see other people doing interesting stuff or you're working with other people, help them to share it. And it doesn't matter what the forum is, if you're on LinkedIn or, or a local newspaper or whatever it is. It will influence others. Uh, so that's my second ask. Please uh, share what you're doing and get the people you work with to share what they're doing on whatever platform you like. And if you let us know, we'll tweet about it. And with that, um, I wish us all a good year. This seems like a good start to the year. It's great to see you. Let's see what we can get uh, going this year. Thank you.